So here's, here's a simple way of looking at this. Let's say we have two teams. We have team A and team B. Team A is, let's, let's just say they're slightly smarter than team B. So I'll even give some, I'll, give, I'll make it unfair here. So team A is slightly smarter than team B. They're slightly better funded. However, the emotional climate in the workplace is horrendous. People are afraid to show up to work. They're afraid they're gonna be fired. They don't get along with their peers. Their leaders don't take care of them. Negative emotions are the norm on team A. Team B, slightly less intelligent, slightly less well, slightly less funded, but the emotional climate is amazing. People love coming to work. They stay extra without being asked to. They get along with each other. They take care of each other. The leaders take care of them. Which team do you think is gonna outperform? B is gonna crush it, especially over the long term. So this is why emotional intelligence is so critical. Now who do you think drives the emotional climate on a team? The leader. Even, there's research suggesting that even leaders who never leave their office through a ripple effect actually have a significant impact on the emotional climate of their team. So our own emotional intelligence is absolutely critical. And fortunately, this is a highly trainable skill. There's two ways to train it. So one is when we do training with leaders, we always start off with an assessment. We measure people's strengths and weaknesses in the emotional intelligence spectrum. And then what we encourage people to do, which you can do even without an assessment, if you're just getting feedback from people, leverage your strengths, like figure out how you can use where you're really strong to shore up the areas where you're not doing so well. So if you're getting a lot of feedback saying you're just not a good listener, there's only two ways to improve. You can't just read a book on listening skills and be a better listener. You can't just think your way into it. You have to practice. The reason is because emotional intelligence competencies are learned implicitly. That means they're learned in the area of the brain that has nothing to do with thoughts and language. It's learned in the area of the brain that doesn't even process thoughts and language. So you have to be practicing these skills to develop them. Or, the best is to do a combination, or you could be training mindfulness and developing self-awareness. Because self-awareness, again, is the foundational competency that affects every other area of emotional intelligence. So again, the ideal way to improve in this area is to do both. Figure out where you're strong, leverage those strengths to show up where you're not so strong, where you can improve, and begin training uh, to improve your self-awareness. Those things in conjunction, you can rapidly improve your emotional intelligence. So for those of you who feel like you're not strong in this area, don't freak out. You, well, you should a little bit, because this is really, really important, but you, you, can, you can get better. Anyone in this room can get better if you don't feel, if there's areas where you feel like you're not strong.